Hi, this is my van. It's a 1996 Toyota Hiace. I've lived in this van for five months now. Before I had this van, I lived in a Ford Transit Connect, and I learned a lot from both converting that van and living in that van, and I applied those lessons to the conversion of this van, making it the ultimate adventure van. So let me show you around. Up here on the roof of my van, I have four 100 watt solar panels, a vent fan, and a Starlink dish. I modified this Starlink dish so that it could be mounted flat on the roof of my van permanently, and I made a how-to video in case you're interested in doing this yourself. These are my bug screens. I have bug screens for both of my front doors and both of my back windows. These ones I just ordered on the internet, but these are fully custom. My mom sewed these for me, and they're just held on by magnets, which is really convenient. So thanks, mom. And this is a shore power plug. It allows me to charge my batteries from a standard 110 outlet. And I have a porch light. And the last thing you might notice on the outside of my van is the exhaust for my diesel heater. So behind the passenger seat, I have this little fabric organizer. This is where I keep quick grab stuff like a hat, gloves, and my bear mace. And then I really wanted a swivel seat in my van, but there's not enough room because of the engine cover and this is just a narrow van. So I got the next best thing. I have a stadium seat. So I just flip that seat forward and then Voila! And I even have a cup holder. My sink is easily one of my favorite features of my van. It's nice and big. This is a 10 inch frying pan and it fits easily in the sink. I just have a regular faucet and a sprayer, which is really nice for doing dishes and what have you. And then the sprayer has a really long hose so I can feed the sprayer out the window. And if I need to spray off equipment or spray off myself, I can do that outside. Underneath the sink, I have a seven gallon freshwater tank, a four and a half gallon gray water tank, a water filter and my water pump. Underneath my gray water tank, I have this drain basin and floor drain. This connects to a hose that goes out the bottom of my van. This allows me to just drain my gray water on the ground, but I don't do this very often because gray water attracts pests and insects, and it's just generally not cool to indiscriminately drain your gray water on the ground. This contraption allows me to quickly and easily swap water tanks. This valve keeps the hose primed, and then I just pop off this hose disconnect, pull out the old tank, put in a new one, and then I swap this thing over, which has a PEX tube that goes to the bottom of the water tank. So this, of course, is my countertop. I'm not very good at finishing wood, so my dad finished this for me, and he used sailboat deck varnish, which makes this really easy to wipe down and clean, and I really love this countertop, so thanks, Dad. And then this is my cooktop. It's an induction cooktop. It has two burners, which is really nice. And I really prefer this over propane. Propane's just kind of sketchy. There's lots of carbon monoxide that's produced, particulates, and we're even finding out that benzene is produced when you burn propane. So I much prefer having this because it just seems like the healthier option. And then this pulls out to give even more counter space. This is a great place to set a cutting board. And then this space also serves kind of as my home office. Underneath the countertop, I have these two tie organizers where a bunch of smaller kitchen items and spices live. And then this bin back here is where I keep all of my large kitchen items. I glued a bunch of corrugated plastic dividers in this bin to help me keep everything organized. So above my countertop, I just have a bunch of storage space. And then this is the switch that turns on my Starlink setup. I've got a little power outlet here. And then this little thing holds my sponge and scrubber brush. This is my over cab storage space. There used to be a TV up there, but now I keep my tent, sleeping bag, laundry bag, and other soft goods up there. And then over in this corner here, I keep my Starlink router. And then this is a knife block that I cut in half, the all important fire extinguisher. And then this is a box that is full of grocery bags. This is my fridge. And of course the best thing about my fridge is that I can stick cool magnets on it, but it actually doesn't work very well as a fridge. It has a freezer compartment, but the freezer doesn't stay cold enough for ice cream or popsicles, which in my mind is the whole point of having a freezer compartment. And then if anything is touching the back, the sides, or the bottom, it will sometimes freeze. So I've ruined a lot of produce in the fridge compartment. This fridge claims to be dual zone, but it's really not. So yeah, my van has a secret toilet. This is by far the best feature of my van. I thought I would only use this thing in emergencies and when I was camping in the desert, but having the option to not use public facilities and to not have to dig a hole, I'm using this thing all the time. And then we have this little drawer with a button latch. And then underneath the little drawer, I have my spare water containers. I fit two back here, so that gives me a total of 21 gallons of water that I can carry in my van. 
And then I've got a couple of 12 volt power ports, my 3000 watt inverter, and this power strip, which is hooked up to the shore power plug. So if I'm on shore power, I can just move these plugs over and then I can run my induction cooktop directly off of shore power. And then the van came with this little handle. I tied a loop of webbing around it so I have a place to set up my resistance bands. And then this is my electrical control panel. It's actually the back of one of my friend's old guitars. So it has a lot of sentimental value and it's kind of the heart of my van. So this switch is for my 3000 watt inverter. This switch is for my 300 watt inverter. This switch turns on an indoor outdoor thermometer. These two switches are blank. This switch turns on the party light. <laughs> This is a switch for my shore power charger. This is my battery monitor. This controls the main lights in my van, and then I have a dimmer switch for my main lights. And then this is the switch for my porch light, and my porch light is also on a dimmer. And then here I have a head unit which drives my speakers. This is a solar input monitor, and then I have a cutout switch for my solar panels. And then I love having this monitor. Not only do I use it when I'm working on the computer, but I can set it up here and watch TV while I'm cooking. And then if I want to watch a movie while I'm laying in bed, I just have to turn it that way. And then back here above the bed, we have the diesel heater controller and this fan. And this fan is awesome. It'll turn in any direction. And it is a total game changer when it is hot outside. And then there's this pull cord, which turns on the reading lights and the twinkle lights. And then above my bed, I have a bunch of storage space. I mostly keep clothes in these bins. Although this one I use for pantry space. And then I have a totally necessary chapstick organizer over here and some more storage bins, paper towels, etc. So one of the biggest challenges in converting this van was actually figuring out how to cover all of the windows. This van has huge windows and they're everywhere. So thankfully I had my mom's help. She was able to figure out a way of sewing these together. All of my window coverings are one inch thinsulate, and then they're held up with a combination of magnets and Velcro. But as you can see, each window is a unique challenge. Like this window had to have a backsplash, and then over the bed, I wanted to be able to half open the window coverings. So that's why there are those straps running across those window coverings. All right, and finally, the trunk. There's really not a whole lot special going on back here. I have my tools back here. Uh, I have a pocket for my skis. You can access my electrical system from the trunk, so that's how I swap out fuses and reset breakers. My diesel heater is down here. And then the only kind of cool thing is that I have this light in here. So when I open up the trunk, there is a light, which is actually really nice. So up here in the cab, I've made a few modifications. I installed the dash camera. I have this head unit, which also has a backup camera. So when I put the van into reverse, we have a nice image that shows up here. And then this thing came stock with the van. It's a little backup clearance and sonar thing. These little dots light up when something is close to the van in that corner. So it's pretty nice for parking in tight spots. And then down here, I have coolant temperature, exhaust gas temperature, and turbo boost. And then this is a little bubble level, which helps me pick a level campsite, which is really nice. And then up here, I have a uh, GPS speedometer. And that's nice because my gauge cluster is, of course, in kilometers per hour. And then over here, this tells me my indoor and outdoor temperature. And then this is the charge current that's coming off of my alternator. So I have a battery to battery charger that I turn on with this switch. And then that lower gauge tells me how much current is going to my house battery. So a lot of you have probably never heard of a Toyota Hiace before. And that's because this van was never sold in North America, Europe, or Australia. And the reason it wasn't sold in a lot of these areas is because this van does not pass modern safety or emissions standards. So you might be wondering how I got my hands on one. Well, here in the United States, we are allowed to import vehicles that are over 25 years old, even if they don't pass those standards. And so I wasn't the one who imported this van, but I bought it from a guy who bought it from an importer. And he told me that this van was used as an airport shuttle for a resort in Japan. So this is a JDM or Japanese domestic market vehicle. And you might be wondering why I chose to build out a JDM vehicle versus a United States domestic market van. And there are a couple reasons for this. One is that this van is a really unique form factor. It's actually shorter in length than a Chevy Suburban and about as wide as a Subaru Outback, but it has 10 and a half feet of cargo length, which is pretty huge. My Transit Connect was not much smaller than this van, and it had less than six feet of cargo length. So this van is pretty maneuverable. It's pretty comfortable on narrow dirt roads. I can parallel park this van really easily. It fits in nearly every parking spot, but it also 
gives me ample living space. And I've been around a lot of lifted high roof sprinter vans with roof cargo boxes on the top and big tire carriers on the back. And those vans have a dominating presence. People notice those vans, but I think people overlook my van because it's smaller and almost cute in a way. The other thing I really like about this van is the powertrain. It has a three liter turbo diesel, a five speed manual transmission. It's all wheel drive. And I've been getting about 20 miles per gallon even with my build out in the back. And that's just a combination of specifications that does not exist in any US domestic market van. You can't even find a five speed on any van that was made in like the last 35 years. So that alone was a huge factor for me. There are however, quite a few drawbacks of living in a 27 year old JDM vehicle, as you might imagine. One is that this van isn't really designed for the roads in North America. The gearing is really short. So it's top speed is around 60 miles per hour. It can go faster, but then you're pushing 3000 RPMs or more, which is not very comfortable. The engine does also overheat pretty easily on long, steep inclines. And it's hard to get parts for this van. It takes four weeks or more to get parts from Japan or Dubai, and nobody knows how to work on this van. The motor in this van was never sold in any platform in North America, and a lot of the parts are bespoke and unique to the Hiace. So I've kind of tried to hedge my bets. I bought a van that was in really good condition. I've done a lot of preventative maintenance, and I have a lot of spare parts on hand in case anything goes wrong. But if I'm honest, it's still kind of stressful. I'm planning on driving up to Alaska this summer, and if something were to go wrong in the remote reaches of the Yukon, that could turn into a massive headache. So subscribe if you want to see if that goes wrong for me. Woo! Would you believe it's 9.45 right now? <laughs> I've actually spent the last two and a half days filming this video and I have countless days yet of editing. So if you found this video interesting or useful, consider subscribing to my Patreon. I don't post a whole lot of content on there, but it's a cool way of supporting me. And then if you just want to do a one-time thing, I've set up a thing where you can buy me a coffee. Basically, you can send me a few bucks and that helps me keep the wheels spinning on my van. So I really appreciate it. And yeah, I've been kind of inconsistent with making content recently, but I'm heading towards Alaska and I'm really excited to film that and share that with you guys. So subscribe if you want to come along for that adventure. And then one final note I wanted to make is that my van is really elaborate and you don't need half or even a quarter of the crap that I have in here. I really geek out on this stuff and I have a lot of fun with designing living spaces and making them efficient, but you don't need all this stuff. And what I would say is if you're interested in this lifestyle, throw a sleeping bag in your car and get out there and try it out. You don't need a van, you don't need a solar generator, you don't need all of this stuff. So. I know that kind of flies in the face of what I just showed you, but really what it's all about is outside of the van, outside the vehicle. Sure, this gets you there, but what's important are the trees. So thank you, and I'll catch you in the next one. And this, ow, ow, ooh.